haven't talked about HP. Uh, sorry, IBM Quantum in a while. We haven't talked about Quantum that much in a while. It's gotten a little quiet after a period of time where there was a lot of announcements. We saw companies like INQ go public. We saw a Honeywell spin off with uh, CQC to create Continuum. Um, but, you know, what's happening with Quantum? Well, it seems to me that what we're doing now is we've kind of entered an era of bringing Quantum to life through real world applications and partnerships. So IBM, uh, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, made an announcement alongside HSBC, uh, one of the world's largest financial institutions, that they're going to do a multi-year collaboration to basically uh, help HSBC bolster its uh, quantum experience. Um, and essentially what I think is going on, Pat, is IBM is working closely side by side with the company to help them really understand what quantum is capable of and figure out how to implement it as part of their business. So for a company like IBM, this is going to mean giving access to systems, um, court, including uh, you, we talked about the Eagle on this show, right? It's Eagle right. processor. Um, and also, you know, working closely with the company to do some validation of potential use cases. Now, in this particular space, financial services, one of them is like anti-money laundering and fraud. This is like a huge opportunity right now when you have um, the volume of, of, of transactions that are going on. Um, you know, you need additional technology. This is where AI and accelerated workloads are coming into place. This is also where quantum is coming into to, to place. Uh, really important to note, though, quantum is not a replacement in any way of what they're doing with IBM. It's not serving in any way as a replacement to classical computing and what you do with uh, accelerated computing to solve these problems. What's really going on is um, it's transformative. It's working in uh, partnership with or in concert with to say, hey, let's take the best of what classical computing can do and let's take the best of what quantum computing can do to potentially increase accuracy and more quickly get the insights that are required. Um, Pat, as I see it, I believe financial institutions are a massive opportunity for quantum computing. Uh, we've seen studies in the past from the likes of JP Morgan. Now you're seeing HSBC. Um, we have a decade of fairly significant innovation that's going to go on in quantum. It's going to be done in partnership. We're going to see more simulation where you're going to see quantum workloads being deployed in public clouds or in cloud type of, of architectures uh, so that you can take advantage of them uh, in concert, like I said, with your classical computing applications. And for IBM as a whole, I think the, the continuous drip of notifying the market, hey, we're winning customers. We're winning large academic institutions. We're winning think tanks. Uh, research labs around the world to be able to say, hey, this technology is valid. And of course, IBM built on superconducting. You've got the likes of of C, uh, sorry, of Quantinuum and IonQ that are built on ion trapping. There's still architectural debates going on in the marketplace, but the opportunities in markets and finance and energy, basically everywhere you see AI and predictions at scale being done to try to help industries take masses of data. There are parallel applications that quantum can support and bring more value to market as well. This is one example that IBM has. So HSBC, this is cool, but I think overall what's really cool is what this means in terms of building meaningful, understandable applications for the market. Dan, good job here, buddy. Uh, I wanna add a couple things. So first of all, if, you know, Quantum is, you know, one of the next big leaps in computing. And we all have to ask ourselves, hey, is this, what phase are we in now, right? You know, there were four phases of AI before it became real. Heck, it took us 25 years uh, to popularize the touchscreen uh, when it came out for uh, a computer. But <clears throat> I can safely say, based on my research that quantum will be real and quantum will add incremental value over um, traditional computing. And the only question uh, is when. I think over the next three years, we are going to see SaaS services and we are gonna see um, solutions that are going to be better and demonstrate quantum supremacy for algorithms that people actually care about. <laughs> and, and I say I say that is because Google already uh, showed quantum supremacy, but it was you know it was on an algorithm that nobody's really doing anything with. So uh, we have to look at it like that. Uh, I also want to talk about IBM strategy, which is to be essentially a full stack provider, right? They have the hardware, they have 
uh, the developer tools. They have uh, the ecosystem. They pretty much have everything uh, in place. I mean, they have multiple ways to consume uh, uh, as well. I think the the only thing that IBM uh, needs to always be looking at is uh, are superconductors going to be the technology that are going to take us into the next generation related to not only the number of qubits, uh, the quality of qubits, but also the size of the installations that are required uh, 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 to do this. Um, but right now, that's the only thing that IBM uh, has to be looking at. It's it's very one of the reasons that I think, in addition to to you know some of the benefits of IBM's strategy for quantum that it brings to the table is is trust. Uh, if you look at IBM's roadmap that it put out, I think like six years ago, and what they committed to, they're actually delivering uh, to promises that they made uh, that long ago. And and if I do a sweep and I, I look at what I've been told by some of the quantum computers makers, they're slipping schedules all over the place. And if they give a roadmap, it might be, I don't know, two years long or it's 10 years long where, where nobody's going to remember that. So I think so far, uh, IBM Quantum has engendered trust uh, across its customers because it's actually delivering what it says it's going to deliver. 